You can see them, the Bible. That's amazing. If you ever go out on that sea and see that mountain range, to say that he could see them while they were in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the sea. And while he was there, he was praying for them. And this storm arose. And Jesus came on the water and they thought it was a spirit. You remember? Finally he spoke to them. They said, it's the Lord. And Peter said, if you're the Lord, bid me to come. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat. Started to walk and looked around. The place was boisterous. He began to sing. Poor Peter. Preachers just beat on him and beat on him. At least he had enough faith to get out of the boat. Amen. <laughs> and then the Lord lifted him up. Went into the ship. When they got in the ship immediately, the storm ended. You may wonder why you are at the place that you're at. Why am I in this storm? Why am I here? Why? Why does God allow that to happen? The end result was peace came. But what about the time between getting in the ship and back in the storm until you have the peace of God? You keep praying on it. No matter what it is, you will get the peace of God to go through it. You need to remember these things. When you're here, I know I'm not preaching to everyone tonight, but is there anybody here in the storm tonight? If you're in a storm tonight, listen to what I'm telling you. When you're in the storm, first thing you need to say is, His purpose brought me here. He constrained them to get in the boat knowing that there was a storm there. His purpose brought them there. You'll never grow in the good times. You'll grow when the force is against you. Amen. Amen. When the battles are coming against you. That's when you'll appreciate just how great that God is when the storms come. And not only did His purpose bring me here, but His prayers protect me here. When I'm fighting the battle, Jesus is praying for me. Amen. Have you ever been in a place that you, you, you couldn't pray? Have you ever been in a place you didn't know how to pray? What to pray? You didn't even know what to say. The Bible says that the Spirit itself helpeth our infirmity. For we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Thank God when we don't know how to pray, Jesus prays for us. He is the shouting, the altars were lined, people were saved. Some folks started testifying and the preacher said, maybe someone else has something good you'd like to say for God. And a lady stood up and said, well, I really don't have anything good to say. My stomach's killing me. Does anybody have a role in it? <laughs> <laughs> he was right there and she didn't even know it. <laughs> I've got news for you. Some of you, he's being right beside of you, in front of you, behind you, all around you, you didn't even know he was there. <clears throat> Why? Because you thought he was a spirit. You didn't realize it was Jesus coming to you and for you to help you in your time of need. There's nothing like the presence of God. Amen. Glory to God. Nothing like the presence of God. Don't you know you don't have to always see the Lord with your eyes and touch Him with your hands if you're just in His presence. That's good enough because when His presence is there, His power is there to sustain us. When His presence was there, Peter took his eyes off of Him, but His presence was still there. And the Lord reached down and picked him up to help him walk again on the water. I'm telling you, you cannot go under where the peace of God is at. Church. I'm not talking about Hickory Grove Church now. I praise God for the local church. 
church. There's nothing like the local church. But I'm not talking about the walls or the building. I'm talking about the church that was bought with the precious blood of Christ. That the Lord owns and rules them. And you know what the Bible says concerning Jesus and the church? He was the one that God had made him to be head of all things and has preeminence in all things according to the book of Colossians. And the Bible goes on to say in Ephesians that Christ is the head Amen. Well, what's so important about that? Don't you know if he is the head, it is impossible to drown if you can't get the head under water. <laughs> I don't think you heard that. You cannot drown if your head is out of the water. And Brother George, there have been times that I'm telling you it was neck deep on me, but he's always head and shoulders above the water. He's always riding on the stone. He's always in control of all things. And he's the one that has ruled and reigned and bought the right to say, listen, the storm won't take you over. The waters won't overwhelm thee or overflow thee. I'm here to take care of you. You're not going down. You're going up. He said, I'm going to take I read again today the journal of a missionary that went to a country in South America, the first one to share the gospel of Christ. He left great wealth, left great fame. And that year, drought hit. And he was preaching the gospel, taking what food he had, he had plenty for himself, but he kept giving it to the natives. And then they begin to see he's going hungry that I can eat. There were weeks and weeks before finally things cleared out enough to go check on him. When they finally found that missionary's body, his journal was under it. The whole village had died of starvation. He had died of starvation. But can I tell you the last sentence in his journal that they found tucked under his body, under his remains? Here's the last sentence in his journal. The Lord has been so good to me. Amen. I used to visit a man that he was bed fast for 13 years. 13 years he didn't go to church. 13 years all he had was the radio to listen to sermons on television programs that he could watch. 13 years hardly anybody came to see. They changed pastors in the church and a lot of the older ones had died and they forgot all about him. But he loved the Lord. One day I went in to visit with him, sat down. He was so happy I'd stop by for just a few moments. And as I sat there, he had a little window beside his bed, and outside the window he had bird feeders there. Those birds would come in almost like they were his best friends. I said, man, those birds are beautiful. He said, yeah, some days. He said, it's just me and them all day long. He said, but God sends them to me. He said, hey, preacher, do you know what my favorite bird is? And I said, I have a clue. He said, my favorite bird is the robin. And I thought, how strange. Most of us shoot away robins, and robins are bothered them. I said, that's strange. I said, man, you've got these beautiful finches out here. And there's hummingbirds coming in. And you, you've got these red birds, these cardinals. So many beautiful birds. I cannot believe. Why, why would you say the robin is your favorite bird? He said, because I've watched it. When it starts raining real hard, all those other birds take cover. He said that that robin will land on that limb right out there. And the whole time the lightning is flashing and the rain is falling, that robin sings. He said he's the only bird that sings in the storm. Hallelujah. Yes. What? Peace of God. To think that God not only says we can have peace 
with God. But in the storm, we can have the peace of God. Changes everything.